Hello, this is Point of View with Shirley Pope. This is a day that God has made, and I'm glad and I'm rejoicing in this day, and I'm thankful that He is my life, my protection, my everything. You can reach me at 214-403-7563. In this webcast, we're talking about loving the one you're with. Loving the one you're with. I'm in psychology today again. This is by Robert Burris, and he's a Ph.D. And uh, loving the one you're with, love is far from blind, he says. We're biased to prefer the status quo. We're biased to prefer the status quo. He goes on to say, we humans are perhaps unique among all species of animals for the complexity of the process by which we select a mate. True, he's going to talk about the puffer fish, okay? A puffer fish, the male puffer fish, strives to impress females by constructing elaborate flower-shaped nests on the sandy seafloor. Male victorious rifle birds perform rhythmic dances to best show off their glittering blue feathers, and female congara frogs, who value bulk in a mate, seek out mates with the deepest, most sonorous croak. But while these behaviors may be complex, the systems are relatively simple. Females judge males on their nest building ability their dancing or their croaks, but don't intend to have a long shopping list of must-haves in a partner. Now humans, however, vary in our preferences and are prone to trade off one desirable trait against another. You might want a physically attractive partner, but also someone who is honest, dependable, ambitious, kind, generous and the list goes on and on so no one and this is the author he says but ryan gosling can hope to score a perfect 10 in every category so this is why most of us must decide whether the constellation of traits possessed by each prospective partner meets the grade so perhaps John is high on sex appeal but low on earning potential, while Sam is rich but looks like a foot. My goodness. Okay. So some might find that a tough choice, uh, and many search, uh, you know, searches uh, studies, research studies. They have sought to investigate how and why humans trade one trait off against another. We're human. God made us unique. We're different from any animal, any bird, any fish, anything. We are different. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Okay, now, all right, further complicating the matter, here's a question recently posed by Gull Gunnadin of Bell Kent University in Ankara, Turkey. She and her colleagues realized that in all the existing research studies, volunteers had been tasked with choosing between two alternative partners who were new. But, she asked, what if one of the alternatives is the current partner? So, of course, this is likely to be a question that many of us who have a long-term partner grapple with often. Just because a person has a partner doesn't mean that they close their eyes to all alternatives. So, choosing a partner isn't a one-off decision, but a continuous processing characterized by repeated decisions to either stick with the relationship or to jump ship for someone new. So, do we stick? Or do we twist? Okay? So in a series of experiments, Gunadin, that's what I'm pronouncing it as, is G-U-N-A-Y-D-I-N. Okay? Had her research volunteers imagine they were in this situation. 
They had been in a relationship for three months, but recently were introduced to someone new. So this person was compared with the current uh, partner and described either as more trustworthy but less attractive or less trustworthy but more attractive. Would the volunteer consider ditching their current partner for the new alternative? Yes or no? My, my, my. So do we switch partners or do we stay with that partner? Let's see here. This is research. So other volunteers had to choose between partners, offering in attractiveness and wealth, or wealth and trustworthiness. Okay, they had to differ in those. Okay, so the volunteers they had to choose between partners differing in attractiveness and wealth, or wealth and trustworthiness. So a controlled group of volunteers were asked to imagine that they were single, but otherwise the task was the same to choose between two potential partners. Other volunteers, uh, the results of the experiments showed that partnered volunteers erred towards sticking with their current partner. That is, if the partner was attractive but untrustworthy, were they the volunteer overvalued attractiveness? If the partner was trustworthy but unattractive, the volunteer overvalued trustworthiness. Wow, that's some experiment, isn't it? Wow. So, our preference for the status quo seems to be stronger than our preference for any particular trait. Now, we can trade one desired trait off against another, but are also carried along by inertia. It's easier to stick with your current partner, even if he or she is imaginary. So now we go to the Festival of Deception. This is Psychology Today. Attraction Evolved. It's uh, loving the one you're with, okay? Loving the one you're with. Festival of Deception. But... What if this effect only emerges when the situation is hypothetical? To test whether status quo preferences persist on the more naturalistic conditions, the researchers set up another experiment. Now this one was more fun because it involved deceiving the volunteers, which we shouldn't begrudge psycho psychologists because it's pretty much the only thing they enjoy doing. Okay, so Gunadin, or Gunadin, or Gunadin, okay, G U N A Y D I N. I do not like to mispronounce people's names, okay? I do not, and if I'm mispronouncing it, please forgive me, all right? So Gunadin invited each female volunteer to the lab one at a time. Now each woman was told she would be taking part in an experiment about decision making in interpersonal relationships. Now they would make a series of decisions in concert with another volunteer, a man, whom they would meet momentarily. Now half the female volunteers would be randomly allocated a male partner, but the other half would read profiles of different men and get to choose which one they preferred to interact with. So in reality, the experiment wasn't about decision making of interpersonal relationships. And all of the women got, the, got to choose which man they preferred to talk with. So the profiles were also fake and had been written by the researchers. Now each woman was given three profiles, three profiles printed onto paper. Two of them described awful men who no one in their right mind would choose, but the third man had good points as well as bad and was almost always chosen. Now after the volunteer 
had chosen her preferred man, she handed the papers back to the research assistant. The research assistant then apologized. Oh no, did I give you three profiles earlier? There should have been one more. They would then go fetch a fourth profile for the volunteer to consider. And you guessed it. The man described in this new profile was the opposite of the previously chosen man. Now if the volunteer had chosen to speak with a wealthy but untrustworthy man, the new man was poor but trustworthy and vice versa. So would the volunteers stick with the man they had chosen first or would they switch to the new man? The result of the experiment showed that people were more likely to stick with the man they had chosen first, even though in the instance the commitment had lasted little more than a minute or two. So the researcher and her colleagues wonder where, whether people would still prefer the status quo if they encounter potential partners in the flesh. So future research is needed to address this question. So they also conclude in this study that their results suggest that mate choice can't be considered an entirely rational process since rational process would involve weighing the better or most preferred trait. Since, um, okay, let me go back. They also conclude that their results suggest, suggest that mate choice can't be considered an entirely rational process, since a rational process would involve weighing the better or most preferred trait more highly, regardless of whether that trait is possessed by a new or established partner. However, they also established or acknowledge that across multiple domains, humans hate to lose out more than we love to gain. You hear me? Humans hate to lose out more than we love to gain. So-called loss aversion. All right? So mate choice may not be special. We prefer the status quo generally. Okay? So one upside to this preference may be that it keeps our relationships intact. So if we changed our affections every time we met someone who surpassed our partners on one trait, many of our relationships would be very brief indeed. So unless, of course, we managed to shack up with Ryan Gosling, so back off. And she said, I saw him first. <laughs> okay, I've heard the name, and I, I don't know whether he's a singer or an actor. Whatever he is, I've just heard the name, okay? And I've seen him, I'm sure. But this lady says she saw him first. <laughs> she saw him first. So what we've just talked about is loving the one you're with. And so they did some research to see the patterns and how what people would change if they met another person that was supposed to be better, had one better trait than the other that she's already with. But these were brief encounters, like a few minute enca minutes encounter, not even five minute encounters during this experiment. So love is far from blind and we're biased to prefer the status quo. And that's Dr. Robert Burris, PhD. All right. Now, but the, the researcher, it was Ganade, let me see, let me turn, Ganadin, Ganadin, okay, go Ganadin, all right. Now, love the one you're with, love the one you're with, oh, why? Now, that was a good short one, how about that? So, we... Uh, love the one you're with and you know I, I tell you uh, love is strange sometimes it's good it's strange many times and we just have to make the best of it by the grace of God 
by the grace of God, by the grace of God. And I don't believe there's a person in this world that does not want to be loved. I, I just cannot believe that there's a person that exists in this world today that does not want to be loved. 